As they were looking on, Jesus was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. Good morning. Today it's a Sunday after Ascension and so we have some readings for Ascension. A teacher once told me how she tried to describe the Ascension to a class of children who knew nothing about the story. Strangely enough, it wasn't the physical ascending of Jesus up into the heavens that the children found hard to understand. What they couldn't understand was why we have to have the Ascension story at all. Didn't it all finish at Easter, when Jesus rose triumphantly from death? Why do we have to have another bit added on? Maybe we all wonder about this. Ascension Day is a bit of a mystery, and perhaps that's why it's become a little bit overlooked. Perhaps it helps to remember that in the stories of Jesus' ascension in the New Testament, the writers are trying to tell us the meaning of what happened, not what we might have recorded on a video camera if we'd been there. So what does it mean? What were the writers of that story trying to say? Well, one thing I think was that the that disciples were separated from Jesus. He had left them. He was no longer there with them. And in a sense, they were bereft. So we might say the Sunday after Ascension reminds us of the absence of God, where between Jesus going away and the Holy Spirit coming, which of course we celebrate uh, next Sunday at Pentecost. But this isn't just a stage in the church's year, it's also a spiritual state, an ever-present stage of our Christian lives. Speaking personally, I often find it a bit hard to get a sense of God's presence. But strangely, it's when I've faced up to his apparent absence that I can begin to learn that God is present, even if it's not in the ways I want him to be. And I know I'm not alone about th with this. Our special prayer, the collect for today, acknowledges this sense of God's absence. We pray, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send thine Holy Ghost to comfort us. The poet Anne Lewin wrote, Prayer, often nothing much happens. There is space, silence and expectancy. No visible sign, only the knowledge that he's been there and may come again. And some people go further than this. The Welsh poet uh, R.S. Thomas, who was also a clergyman, wrote, Why no? I never thought other than that God is that great absence in our lives, the empty silence within. If only Jesus was, was here with us, then we could ask him and it would all be so simple. But Jesus has gone away into, into heaven and God is silent. So ascension, ascension is about the absence of God. But ascension, secondly, ascension is also about the lordship of Christ. Jesus is ascended into the heavens. He has withdrawn from us and has been carried up into heaven. So Jesus is no longer simply the leader of a small band of disciples. He's Lord of all. The rules which govern the workings of the world are those which Jesus set forth in his life and teachings. His teachings about forgiveness and self-denial and finding your life by losing it. All the things he laid down for his disciples. They're the same rules by which the whole universe works. A professor of theology once wrote, Christian faith in the ascended Lord means for us that even among the vast silences of the universe, the personal reality which came to expression in Jesus Christ gives us a deeper clue to the meaning of it all than all the wheeling galaxies and gas clouds. The ascension means that the love of Christ has overcome. So Jesus has left the church and has entered the stage of the whole cosmos. And our task is not to guard him within the fortress of the church, but to proclaim that he's out there in the lives of every human individual and every human organisation. And we're to look for him there, not just in church. 
But what does this mean when we're living in a world where so much seems to be against all that we think of as godly? What does this mean in the face of the deadly coronavirus? Where is the face of Christ in that beautiful but fearful life form? Is Christ the Lord of the virus and the bacteria, as well as of the heavens? Or are these things of the devil? Certainly we have come to think of them in this way, as an evil to be fought against and overcome. And equally, this deadly disease poses a great challenge to our understanding of God's world. And I have no easy answers. But in the end, I believe that the message of the Ascension is that Christ has overcome all the forces of evil. He is Lord of all creation, Lord even of the coronavirus. May God bless you and those whom you love today and in the week ahead. Amen.